قتل الانسان ما اكفره cursed is man how disbelieving is he قتل قتل this is fair and meaning he was killed but it doesn't mean that allah is telling us that he was killed no قتل is actually kind of a dua it's kind of making a prayer against someone that may they be killed meaning may they be destroyed may they be finished and many times dua for or against someone is made in fi'l madhi like for example radiyallahu anhu what do we say may allah be pleased with him radiya is past tense similarly sallallahu salla what does it mean may allah send his blessings but what does salla mean he sent blessings it's past tense you understand so similarly Qutila, this is in past tense, but this is actually a dua against. Now obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not need to make a dua against someone, because obviously He is the one who is called upon. So from Allah, what does it mean by qutila? Meaning blu'ina. That this person is cursed. He is cursed. He is destroyed. He is finished. Qutila al-insanu. And al-insan, who does it refer to? Any insan who is like this, who is like what? Ma akfara. How disbelieving is he? How ungrateful is he? So any person who is disbelieving, who is ungrateful, Allah says, Qutila. May he be cursed. He is ruined. He is perished. He is finished. Ma akfara. What does it mean by ma akfara? Ma is understood in a number of ways. First of all, ma is showing the enormity. فَغَشَّاهَا مَا غَشَّاهَا What does ma show? The enormity. So, ma akfara meaning ma ashaddu kufrahu. That how great is his kufr? How severe is his kufr? How very disbelieving is he? How very ungrateful is he? Then secondly, ma is also understood as istifham, a question. That ma akfarahu, what makes him Disbelieve. What makes him ungrateful? What has led him to his disbelief? And what has led him to be so ungrateful? It doesn't make sense. What has driven him to disbelieve? What has driven him to ingratitude? Why is he so ungrateful? Why is he disbelieving? And then thirdly, ma is also for the purpose of ta'ajjub, to show amazement. Like we have learned in Surah Al-Baqarah, فَمَا أَصْبَرَهُمْ عَلَى النَّارِ That how patient are they over hellfire? So, ma akfara, meaning how ungrateful is he? It's shocking, it's amazing. Qutil al insanu ma akfara. What has made him so disbelieving? What has made him so ungrateful? How ungrateful is he? Min ayyishay in khalaqa. From what substance did he create him? Look at yourself. What gives you so much arrogance? Why are you ungrateful to Allah? Have you seen yourself? Min ayyishay in khalaqa. From what has Allah created him? Min nutfatin, from a sperm drop. Your origin is something so despicable. Ma imahin, Allah created him from nutfa. Min nutfatin, khalaqahu, he created him. Faqaddara, and then he destined for him. But look at his audacity, that he is so ungrateful. He is so disbelieving. He has the courage to ask, that when will the day of judgment be? He has the courage to deny what Allah has commanded him to do. مِن نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَ فَقَدَّرَ From the root letters, قَافْ دَالْغَى تَقْدِيرَ And تَقْدِيرَ as you know is to decree. And over here, فَقَدَّرَهُ This is understood in a number of ways. That first of all, he decided his تَقْدِيرَ Meaning he destined for him. Allah created the human being from the nutfa. And while the child is still in the womb of the mother, all of the taqdeer of the child is decided. Isn't it so? The angel asks Allah that what should this child be? A male or a female? Should he be shaqi or sa'id? Successful or wretched? And then everything is decided for him. Similarly, the lifespan of the child, the rizq of that person, the amal, what is he going to do? What is he going to eat? What is he going to... Where is he going to go? Everything Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees for a person. Everything. From his body to his appearance, 
to his abilities, his height, everything. فَقَدَّرَهُ Allah decreed for him. Secondly, قَدَّرَ also means قَدَّرَهُ أَطْوَارَ meaning Allah develops him, He creates him. How? In stages. Because قَدَّرَ يُقَدِّرُ تَقْدِيرُ is also to estimate, to formulate. So, مِن نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَ And it's not just that all of a sudden the child is fully grown in the womb. No. He's grown how? In stages. A blood clot, then an embryo, so on and so forth. One stage after the other until the final complete state. And then thirdly, قَدَّرَ also is understood as قَدَّرَ his جَوَارِحِ Meaning Allah, He estimated, He formulated, He made His eyes, His limbs, His hands, His feet. And He made Him such that He is proportioned in every way that the height the looks, everything is decided. So, مِن نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَهُ ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَهُ Then he eased the way for him. يَسَّرَ تَيْسِيد To make easy, to facilitate. So then, after that, he made the way easy for him as well. Which way is this? The way, meaning the right way of life. Tawheed. Islam, obedience to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that easy. How? By sending guidance, by sending the messengers. It's not that a person is left on his own to figure out what the truth is. No. Allah has made this path of obedience easy, facilitated as well. And notice the word yassara. They see it does not mean easy only, but what does it mean? When it's facilitated for you. Remember the example of the horse. Yassar al-farasa lil-rukub. That it's prepared, facilitated for riding. All you have to do is just sit and ride the horse. It's prepared. Everything is done. Similarly, guidance Allah has sent. The Qur'an Allah has sent. The messenger Allah has sent. Everything is ready. All you have to do is show some interest, learn, and then do something. Now secondly, the word as sabil is also understood as سَبِيلُ الْخُرُوج مِنْ بَطْنِ أُمِّهِ That the way of exit from the mother's womb. That man's creation is completed where? In the womb of the mother. مِنْ نُطْفَةٍ خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَهُ And then, ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَهُ And then Allah also made the way out of the womb easy as well. Imagine if there was no natural way of, you know, the child coming out of the mother. If every time a C-section had to be performed. Just imagine how many children would die. And for so many years, this was not even heard of. That a child could be brought out of the womb through some other way. So, ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَ Look at the mercy of Allah. That He has shown guidance to people. He has made every arrangement for their guidance. And He has also made perfect arrangements for a child to come out of the womb of the mother. ثُمَّ أَمَاتَهُ فَأَقْبَرَهُ and then he caused his death and then provides a grave for him. Amatahu. After a person lives his life in this dunya, eventually he dies. And then when he dies, فَأَقْبَرَ أَقْبَرَ from قَبَر What does قَبَر mean? Grave. أَقْبَرَ To put someone in a grave. To bury someone. Two things are mentioned over here. Death and the grave. And even these are blessings. Where creation of the human being, the taqdeer of the human being, that is a blessing. Guidance is a blessing. The way out of the womb of the mother, that way is also a blessing. Similarly, death is a blessing and the grave is a blessing. How is it a blessing? Imagine if people did not die and they had to live with their weaknesses and their old age. You know, these days, because of the advancement in medicine and so on and so forth, people are living longer. But how are they living longer? How? Such difficult lives, with so much pain, being completely dependent on other people, on machines, that without it they cannot survive. So death is also a mercy. Imagine if people did not die. Most of the population on this earth would be of who? People who are useless, people who are burdened, people who are miserable themselves, and they're also a burden on others. So death is also a mercy. And then after that, qabr, even that is a mercy. 
Because imagine if a person died and he was left on the surface of the earth. There was no concept of burying the dead. How difficult life would become for those who are living. So thumma amatahu faqbarah. And imagine if the punishment that is to be suffered after that can be seen by other people. How humiliating. How embarrassing. So faqbarah. ثم إذا شاء أنشره. Then when he wills, he will resurrect. Meaning, whenever Allah wants, Allah will resurrect the person as well. Because if He has taken him from all of these stages, from nutfa to alaqa to the completion of the creation of the womb, and then getting out of there, and then living through life, and then dying, and then being put in the grave, then Allah can also bring him out whenever He wants. ثم إذا شاء أنشره. If you brought him out of the womb of the mother once. He can take him out of the earth as well. ثُمَّ إِذَا شَاءَ أَنْشَرَ In Surah Luqman, Ayah 32, Allah says, وَمَا يَجْحَدُ بِآيَاتِنَا إِلَّا كُلُّ خَدَّارٍ كَفُورٍ None rejects our signs except everyone who is treacherous and ungrateful. It's the ungrateful people who deny the signs of Allah. So this is why it was said earlier, قُتِلَ الْإِنسَانُ مَا أَكْفَرَ How ungrateful he is. He enjoys all of these blessings and at the end, look at him. Look at him. He doubts the power of Allah. Recitation. And lamma yaqdi ma amara. What does lamma mean? It gives the meaning of not. And when it comes with the fi'l mudarir, it gives the meaning of nafi. And it gives the meaning of madi to the fi'l mudarir. So lamma gives the meaning of madi to yaqdi. So yaqdi is technically mudari, so it should be giving the meaning of present or future, right? But it gives the meaning of past tense to the fair mudari, and it means not. So lamma yaqdi, he has not completed. Not that he has not completes, no, that wouldn't make sense. Lamma yaqdi, he has not completed. He has not accomplished. And what does qada yaqdi mean? To accomplish, to complete, to fully carry out so he has not accomplished ma amara what he commanded him. Meaning what Allah has commanded the person to do, the person has not done it. Human beings haven't done it. Allah has given us many, many commands. Which one of us can claim that yes, I have followed every command. I have done everything. I have fulfilled everything. No person can claim that. لَمَّا يَقْضِ مَا أَمَرَ فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Then let mankind look at his food. Let a human being look at the food that he is eating. Because if you notice in all of these ayat, what is being mentioned? That why are you so ungrateful? When Allah has given you everything, life, guidance, perfect body, everything Allah has given you, then why should you not obey Him? But the fact is that man has not completed whatever Allah has commanded him to do. And he should be grateful. And how is it that a person should be grateful? Look at the blessings that Allah has given you. فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طُعَامِ Just look at the food that you eat. Just look at the food that you eat. How Allah provides it for you so that you can stay alive. How Allah provides it for you so that your body is nourished, it grows. How is the food coming to you? Look at the long process behind it. أَنَّا صَبَبْنَا الْمَاءَ صَبَّا How we pour down water in torrents. صَبَبْنَا صَبْ Sab is to pour forth from above in profusion. When something is poured forth from above, how? In abundance. Like for example, imagine a bucket that is taken and it's just turned upside down from above. Imagine all the water that's going to come. So when it rains, it doesn't just rain a little bit. Imagine all of the water that is falling down from the sky. If you were to collect it in a place, how much it would be? So, anna sababun al maa sabba in abundance, in torrents. Summa shakakun al ard shakka. Then we broke open the earth, splitting it with sprouts. Shakakuna shak. What does shak mean? To split something, to cut something open, to tear something open. So we cause the earth to tear open, shakka, a splitting, a tearing, and shakka, this word has been mentioned over here at the end, why? To show abundance. That how the earth is made to split open with what? With the plants that come out, with the plants that grow out of it. When it rains, the seeds that are buried in the earth, 
all of them start to grow and as they grow their shoots they come out of the earth tearing through the earth thumma shaqqana al-ard shaqqa imagine if the earth was like concrete that water falls over it and it just gets washed away no it doesn't happen like that the water is absorbed in and what is inside can actually come out if you compare what a very young shoot is like to the earth to the soil i mean a shoot it's so fragile blades of grass how weak are they so weak but it's amazing how they can come out of the earth causing the earth to split thumma shaqqana al-ard shaqqa fa'anbatna fiha habba and we caused to grow within it grain anbatna we caused to grow fiha in the earth habba grains different different types of grains such as wheat barley so on and so forth that people eat from and not just grains but were inaban and grapes wa qadba and also herbage fruit for you to enjoy and qadb qadb is from the root letters qaf dadba and it is such edible plants that are eaten raw generally generally they are eaten raw it's not necessary that they should be cooked you know some foods you must cook them in order to eat them or if you try to eat them raw it won't be very pleasant or it's not as good for you but qadb is nutritional edible herbs that are eaten raw generally and it's also said that qadb is those vegetables that are meaning the root is consumed by people and what grows at the top the leaves they're consumed by animals so for example carrots you eat them and the rest of it you just throw it in your garbage but in other places what do people do they give it to their animals to eat similarly radishes potatoes turnips beets i mean the list is endless so this is what qadb is and the people of makkah they would call such plants that are to be taken out of the earth uprooted taken out of the earth in order to be consumed they called it qadb so wa inaban wa qadba and grapes and herbage wa zaytunan and olives wa nakhla and date palms وَحَدَائِقَ and gardens that are غُلْبَ that are of dense shrubbery حَدَائِقَ plural of حَدِيقَ and غُلْب plural of أَغْلَب and أَغْلَب غَيْن لَامْبَ what does غَلَبَ mean? to dominate over the other and from this أَغْلَب is used for dense trees such trees that are of luxuriant growth meaning there are a lot of leaves very very dense so حَدَائِقَ غُلْبَ gardens of dense shrubbery وَفَاكِهَةً and fruit وَأَبَّا and also grass أَبَّا from the root letters Hamza Baba and أَب is that which the animals eat that which the cattle the grazing livestock they graze on whether it is fresh or dry so fresh grass or straw hay so وَفَاكِهَةً وَأَبَّا فَاكِهَةً who eats it people and أَبَّا who eats that animals مَتَاعًا لَكُمْ as enjoyment for you وَلِأَنْعَامِكُمْ and also for your grazing livestock now if you go back to the ayah where Allah says فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَى طَعَامًا man should look at the food that he eats the morsel of food that you put in your mouth for example you take a piece of bread and then you take some vegetable curry for example with it and you eat that Now for you, you just take it in a moment and you put it in your mouth, you give it a few bites and then you swallow it and done. But imagine the entire process that has taken place behind the scenes for that food to get onto your table. For that food to reach your mouth. That bread that you're eating was once upon a time wheat. And that wheat was once upon a time on a plant. And that plant was something very tiny. and something that didn't exist before all of this began from what rain anna sababna al ma asabba thumma shaqqana al ard shaqqa and then so many different different types of plants fruits grains allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes to grow different different ones and we assemble them and we just make one dish and we eat all of that fal yanzur al insanu ila ta'ami reflect on the food that you eat so many blessings 
so many favors, so many things have taken place for you to be able to eat that food. Mata'an lakum wali an'amikum. Recitation. Kalla lamma yaqudhi ma amarah Falyanzuri al-insanu ila ta'amih Anna sababna al-ma And all of them are mentioned over here. Why? So that we become more grateful. And what makes a person grateful is reflection. That you reflect on the blessings that you're enjoying. Think about them. Spend some time thinking about them. And when you will do that, only then you'll be grateful. And why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing about feelings of gratitude in us? Because this is what leads a person to obedience. It has been said, Kalla lamma yaqdi ma amara. A person does not accomplish what Allah has commanded him to do. So what is it that will make you eager to obey Allah? What is it that will make you more eager to please Allah? When you are grateful. In the beginning of the surah, what did we learn? That there are some people who are not eager, who are not interested, and there are other people who are more interested. Who is eager? Who is interested? The one who is grateful. And who is not eager? Who is not interested? Man istaghna. Who considers himself to be rich. Who is not grateful at all. So all of these blessings are mentioned over here so that we can be grateful. Because gratitude is what leads to obedience. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَةِ But when there comes the deafening blast. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَةِ The deafening cry. And what is the sakha referring to? The second blast of the resurrection. The second blowing of the trumpet. الصَّاخَ is from the root letter صَاد خَاخَ And sakh is to scream. What does it mean? To scream. And it is such a scream that is so loud that it almost deafens a person. It's almost deafening. It almost takes away the hearing of a person. Rajulun asakh is a person who cannot hear. He has been made deaf. What made him deaf? A very loud blast. So فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَ The second blast that is so loud that the ears are almost deafened by it. And does it literally mean that people will become deaf? No. What it means is that they will not be able to hear anything else. Because when a person is deaf, he cannot hear. So similarly, when the trumpet is blown, people will not be able to hear anything else. All they will hear is the sound of the trumpet. All they will hear is the sound of the trumpet. It's the loudest sound that cannot be buried by any other sound. That person cannot ignore it because of some other sound. And imagine what great things will happen at that time. Mountains are being blown up. But what is the sound that will overpower every other sound? The sound of the trumpet. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَةِ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ On the day a man will flee from his brother. يَفِرُّ He will run away. Why? Because he will be terrified. He will be afraid. He doesn't want to face his brother. Because remember, farar is to run away from something that is terrifying, something that is dangerous, something that is harmful. So a person will consider his brother to be harmful to himself. This is why he will not even go to his brother, rather he will run away from him. Wa ummihi wa abihi, and his mother and also his father. He will run away from his very own brother. He will run away from his very own mother and his father. Wa sahibatihi, and his wife, the one whom he loved, the one whom he spent so much time with, sahiba. Who is sahiba? From sahiba, a person whom one spends a lot of time with. But the same wife, a man will run away from her. Wabanihi and his children. His own son, whom he used to run to see, run to hug, he will run away from him. Wasahibatihi wabanihi. Why is it that a person will run away from his brother? And remember the word brother is also applied to a friend. Why will he run away from his brother, his mother, his father, his wife, his children? Because لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ For every man that day will be a matter adequate for him. 
لِكُلِّ مْرِئِنْ For every person من whom, from among them Every single individual يَوْمَ إِذِنْ On that day For every person There will be a شَأْنٌ A condition A situation A circumstance An affair That is going to يُغْنِيهِ That is going to يُغْنِيهِ From others Meaning that will make him Rich of others He will not have the need He will not have the concern For other people In other words Every person Will be preoccupied With his own شَأْن So that he will not be Distracted by anything Anyone He will not be concerned About anyone else That شَأْن that he is in Will distract him From everyone else يُغْنِيهِ What is شَأْن? Shatan is an important situation that a person is in. An important situation, an important affair, an important circumstance. And this word is also used for a concern. So for every person will be a concern, a predicament to distract him, to preoccupy him, so that he will not think about others. Each person will be so busy with his own affairs, will be so worried about himself, that he will not be concerned for others. He will not have the time to look at others. He will not have the desire to even think about others. He will not have any inclination to attend to anyone else's needs. Why? Because he's so concerned about his own needs. Even if the other is very, very close and dear to him. In this dunya, what happens? When a person is extremely busy even, extremely occupied even, if the mother calls, if the father calls, no matter how busy they are, they are going to pick up the phone. Even if they are in a lot of pain, when their child calls them, when their husband calls them, when their wife calls them, they will get up and do something for them. But on the day of judgment we see, a person will run away from all of these people, those who are closest to him. Why? Because he's so worried about himself. He's so concerned about himself. لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مِّنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِيهِ What does this show to us? That every individual is responsible for himself on the day of judgment. Every individual is responsible for himself on that day. He will not take the burden of another. He will not even care for other people. And each person will be so worried about his affair, his end, that he will forget about everyone else. There is another hadith in which we learn The Prophet ﷺ said That you all will be gathered Barefoot, naked, walking And uncircumcised So Aisha Dilan has said O Messenger of Allah If the people are naked Will we look at each other? Will we see one another's nakedness? And he replied Every man among them on the day of judgment Will have enough worries Will have enough worries To make him careless of others Every person will be so worried that he will not even bother to look at the other. He will not even notice the person who is next to him. And if he sees his mother, he's going to run away. What if she asks me for something? If he sees his father, he's going to run away. I don't want to see him today. I don't want to talk to him today. I'm too busy today. I'm too worried today. I have no time for others. In this dunya, unfortunately, what happens? We neglect so many important things for the sake of other people. We say, I cannot do this because I cannot make my husband unhappy. I cannot do this because I cannot make my mother unhappy. And sometimes it is something that Allah wants us to do. But we will not do it just because we don't want to displease our family members. But we see that on the day of judgment, a person will be running away from them. He will not care about them. Nor will they care about him. Some faces that day will be bright. Some faces on that day will be musfira. They'll be gleaming, shining, beaming, happy, radiant, giving out light. Why will they be giving out light? Because dahikatun, laughing, mustabshira, rejoicing. Why laughing? Why smiling? Why laughing? Out of joy. What joy are they given? Mustabshira, they're given good news. Mustabshira, receiving good news, rejoicing at good news. Why are they happy? Why are they pleased? Why are they rejoicing? What good news are they given? The good news of paradise. The good news of the pleasure of Allah. The ridwan of Allah. 
that Allah is happy with them. وجوه يومئذ مسفرة ضاحكة مستبشرة happy laughing smiling rejoicing at good news and we learn that on the day of judgment some people will be able to see Allah in paradise some people will see Allah the people of paradise will see Allah and when they will see Allah what will happen their faces will become even more beautiful وجوه يومئذ مسفرة ضاحكة and on the other hand, وَوُجُوهُنْ And other faces, يَوْمَ إِذِنْ On that day, عَلَيْهَا غَبَرَ Upon them will be dust. غَبَرَ Blackness. غَبَرَ From the root letters, غَيْنْ بَارَ And غَبَرَ is the dirty effect that remains on something even when mud has been removed. So for example, if a place is dirty, you clean it, even though you've cleaned it still, it looks dirty. Like for example, if you've written something on a piece of paper with a pencil, you take an eraser and you erase it. Sometimes it's gone completely. And other times, the effect is still there. The grayness is still there. The paper doesn't remain clean. So this is what ghabara is. Ghabara is also dust particles that remain and that can be seen. So, وَوُجُوهُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَلَيْهَا غَبَرَ Some faces... On them will be dust. On them will be blackness. On them will be darkness. They will look dirty. Tarhakuha qatara. Blackness will cover them. Tarhakuraha qaf. To overcast. To cover. To overpower. What will overpower those faces? Qatara. Qatara is from qaf ta'ra. And qatara is smoke that rises up from burning wood. And such smoke that rises up from burning wood, what happens? It makes the faces dark. It makes the faces dark. If you close to a fire for a very long time and that fire is on wood, then what's going to happen? It's going to make your face black. تَرْهَقُهَا قَطَرَ Blackness is going to cover their faces. And who are these people? أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَفَرَةُ الْفَجَرَةُ Those are the disbelievers. الْفَجَرَةُ The wicked ones. Why is it that their faces will be dark? Why? Because of gloom, because of sadness, because of horror, because of the bad news that they have been given, because of the punishment that they have been sentenced to. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَفَرَ Who are kafara? Plural of kafir. And who is kafir? Someone who is a disbeliever. But kufr is also used for ingratitude. Al-fajara. Fajara is a plural of fajir. Who is fajir? Someone who disobeys. Someone who is sinful. So the one who is sinful, the one who is ungrateful, the one who is disobedient, the one who is disbelieving, on that day, darkness will cover his face. Gloom, sadness, misery is going to cover his face. Recitation. فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ Because of the reward that they are being given. Because Allah is happy with them. Because they are successful. وُجُوهُ يَوْمَئِذٍ مُسْفِرَةٍ ضَاحِكَةٌ مُسْتَبْشِرَةٌ And on the other hand, وَوُجُوهُ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَلَيْهَا غَبَرَةٌ تَرْهَقُهَا قَطَرَةٌ At a time when people are given their results, there are some people who are very happy, very excited. You can see the joy on their faces. And other people, sad, quiet, hiding their faces away. Out of embarrassment, out of shame. They don't want to face anyone. They don't want to face other people. تَرْهَقُهَا قَطَرَ But this is not injustice. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَفَرَةُ الْفَجَرَ Who is happy at the end? Someone who? has done something. Someone who has accomplished something and who is sad and miserable, feeling guilty, upset, and the upsetness is visible on the face. Who? Someone who hasn't done much, who hasn't accomplished much. So, we have learned earlier, يَوْمَ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ مَا سَعَى That a person, whatever he's been striving for, if it's something good, he'll be happy. And that happiness will be visible. His face will be bright. مُسْفِرَ ضَاحِكَ Just imagine some people are laughing on the Day of Judgment. Laughing, ضاحكة, مستبشرة, receiving good news. 
as if they cannot keep the happiness within themselves the happiness is visible on the face they can't help but smile they can't help but laugh mustabshira and on the other hand there are those who are just sad darkness is covering their faces gloomy upset miserable don't want to face anyone don't want to see anything and this is for who those who are guilty kafara fajara recitation فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَّةِ يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته